Are you always going over budget? At the end of every single month, are you wondering why you are over budget again? Do you feel like a budgeting failure? In this video, I'm going to tell you why you are constantly over budget and how you can fix it. And I know this because I've made all of these mistakes myself. Hey, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband Mauricio and I are on the Dave Ramsey plan to pay off more than $300,000 worth of debt. Didn't I just make you feel a lot better about yourselves when I told you how much debt we started with? We are going through this process and it is long and slow and painful, but we are learning ever so much along the way. So if you are interested in joining us, walking through our debt-free process, we would love to have you join. You can go ahead and click that big old red subscribe button down below. So I get lots and lots of messages all the time from people who are like, how do you stick to a budget? I can't ever make my budget work. Now, I will tell you that a budget is fluid and budgets change throughout the month. We are definitely the prime examples of how you have to modify your budget from before the month begins to the time that you have finished that monthly budget. There is no one set budget that lasts for the whole month. Things come up. It happens. So I am going to talk to you about a few areas where you might be causing part of the problem and how you can help yourself fix it. Number one, your budget is too tight. Yep, I said it. I know Dave Ramsey recommends a beans and rice sort of plan, but if you go to beans and rice, it's a term, you can really cause yourself some real problems. This is actually the number one reason I think people don't stick to a budget is because they, they, constrict themselves far too much and then try and stay on it and get frustrated when stuff pops up. I mean, a hundred dollars in a budget for groceries for a family of five. Yeah, it can be done. It's redonkulously difficult and requires so much planning and forethought. Ain't nobody got time for that. Or you could eat ramen noodles for every meal, but that gets boring really fast. And after like two years of ramen noodles, um, yeah, no, there's no more ramen noodles. And sure, Dave talks about tuna and how he will never eat tuna again, but my guess is he didn't eat tuna every single meal. How do you fix that? You have to be honest with yourself. If you wanna put $500 in the budget every month for groceries because you love to cook, that's okay. There is no rule that says you cannot spend $500 a month and go through this process. If you're like me and know that you're gonna spend money on Amazon, whether you planned on it or not, put it in the budget. If you are real about your budget and really understand yourself as a person, you will actually do better on your budget every month. Number two, you are completely unrealistic with your goals. What do I mean by saying that you're unrealistic with your goals? If you are planning on putting 50% of your income to debt, that's reasonable. If you're planning on putting 95% of your income to debt, probably not reasonable. What do I mean? Take a look at your budget and see, are you being realistic with the amount that you can put to debt every month? Because maybe you're aiming too high. Is this a justification to go down to minimum payments only? No, but maybe back off a little tiny bit and give yourself some breathing room. Number three, you keep forgetting things in your budget. So this is a big one that happened to me a lot. And so what I did is I created an Excel spreadsheet and I started listing every single thing that came up in the year. Things like first day of school outfit and school supplies and Valentine's Day and fireworks on the 4th of July and my yearly annual payment for every dollar. Another idea is to get on Dave Ramsey's email list. Why? Because every month he sends out an email before the month begins telling you several things that are going to happen in the next month that you shouldn't forget. Number four, have a little bit of fun money. A couple of examples would be blow money or family fun money or some people call it an entertainment expense. 
I definitely am a huge proponent of this because when we first started out, we went full on hardcore, no blow money, no fun. And we lasted less than a month. You have to be able to do stuff. You can't sit at home and stare at the wall all the time. You just can't. So, you know, plan for it. It's okay to spend money if it's in the budget. You will survive this debt snowball payoff process a lot more easily if you don't feel like you're being strangled by your bank account. Number five, your outgo exceeds your income. What if you are down to a bare bones budget and you are just barely making ends meet? What do you do? That means it's time to make radical changes. This is the log jam principle that Dave talks about in his videos all the time. A logger throws a big tree trunk into the river and sometimes they all come to a bottleneck and they clog up and they stop moving. And that's when you throw in a stick of dynamite. This scenario is one of those times. So get out your stick of dynamite. You can move, you can get another job, maybe a second job or a third job. You could sell your car, do something, anything whatever you have to do to get that log jam unclogged. So. I give you half of some money. <laughs> I give my husband plenty of money. Don't even think I don't give Mauricio money. Let's try that again. Number three. Can you hear Mauricio playing the piano in the background? Cause Mauricio has taught himself to play the piano. Let's see if we can hear. So he went to YouTube University and learned how to play the piano. My parents had given Melina piano lessons a while back and she didn't really enjoy them. So we pulled her out of those, but Mauricio has really enjoyed learning to play the piano. And now I have to go shut him up. Mr. Valencia. Unless you want YouTube land to judge your piano playing skills, I would highly suggest you stop. So are you always sticking to your budget? Do you always go over? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. So leave me a comment down below. I'd say we are about 75% on budget. And again, our budget's fluid. 25% of the time we go over, it happens even now after two years of budgeting. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya.